So you just got your general license. The whole new world of HF has now opened up to you. But where do you start? Maybe you haven't considered what gear to get. On today's show, we're going to discuss just that topic. What gear would be great that's going to be inexpensive to get you going if you don't have a huge budget to buy a whole bunch of HF gear and say you want to go off and do some POTA or something like that. We're going to discuss that right here, right now on Ham Radio for Non-Techies. Welcome back to Ham Radio for Non-Techies, guys. My name is Scott. My call sign is KI5NPL, and I run the Ham Radio for Non-Techies channel, where we try to simplify the ham radio hobby to get you into it as quickly as possible to pass your exams and let you enjoy it as much as we do. Now, like I said, you if you got your general license recently, and I've, I'm, this the show came about because I've got a couple friends locally that just got their general, not a whole lot of money, not really sure what to do. So what, what gear would you go with? Where, where do you start? There's so much stuff out there, so many options out there from really cheap garbage to really expensive stuff. So I want to try to simplify by giving you a couple options of things that I would consider uh, to be worth your time. So with that being said, you know, you got to, again, as always, you got to figure out what it is you want to do with, with, with radio. Uh, my big thing, obviously, is POTA. I love going out and doing the parks on the air stuff. Some of it's forced because of the way I have a huge noise floor here at the house, and I can't really do a whole lot of HF thanks to Mr. Solar Panels down the road. Uh, so my big thing is going out to a park. and I, I, It's great to be out there. I love being out in the park, being out in nature, doing things, and make, playing radio just adds icing to the cake. But, you know, if you're new, and like I said, the people I'm referring this to are younger people that just got into the hobby. They're in their late teens, and... They don't probably they don't have a whole lot of money going coming in. You know, for whatever reason, they don't have a, lot, a whole lot of cash coming in. Maybe don't have jobs or you know, whatever, focusing on school. Uh, but they still want to play radio and still want to get into it and utilize their their general license. So I came up with a couple of ideas here, and uh, I want to run through it. These are not set in stone. You can modify these things obviously however you want to do it. But I think these would work for both as a home station and or if you want to go out and do POTA and be portable. These both these two options I came up with for little packages, I think would be the best thing ro rolling for you. So without further ado, let's go over to my desktop. And uh, while we're on the desktop here, the first uh, first option for you is going to be going with like a setup like this. You need a radio, you need an antenna, you need a battery, and you need coax. Those are the four main things you're going to need to get you on the air and get you rolling. So my first package here is be going with like the G90, the KM4 ACK antenna, which you have to build, and you know we'll get to that in a second. Uh, the Bio NO 15 amp hour battery, which is probably overkill for a 20 amp uh, or, or for a 20 watt radio. Uh, so you could probably bring that down to like a 9 amp hour and be just fine and save a couple bucks. But you know if you're eventually going to be growing in the hobby, which you will, uh, starting off the 15 amp hour battery to run a 20 watt. Uh, radio isn't so bad because you eventually you're going to get a 100 watt rig and the 15 amp hour run a 100 watt rig 100 watt rig uh, for many many hours before you have to do anything with it um, and now I mean for, for home use this might not be ideal for home use you probably won't go actually and go out and get a power supply I did not include that in here so I'm thinking more about the portable aspect of it and getting out and going playing radio out in the woods uh, and then finally you got your coax which I've chosen uh, some of the best coax out there is the ABR uh, 218, and that's 50 foot roll of uh, coax, which you can, I'll, I'll have links for that here. So option two is going to be my one of my favorites, which is the Yesu 891, 100 watt rig, doesn't have a waterfall, blah blah blah, but it's a great radio. It's been around for a long time, and there's a reason for it because it's absolutely reliable. It's a really good radio. It does all kinds of stuff, and once you get used to the menu system and things like that. This radio is going to be a, just a, a butt kicker throughout the entire, uh, all, all throughout the airwaves. And I kept it, you know, same gear. So we got the same rate, it's a different radio, same gear. So we can mix it up a little bit. Say you want to change out the KM4 ACK antenna and you want to go with something a little more hands off, you know, not building the antenna, but actually going off just uh, getting something you can plug in and use. Well, then you got the spark plug antennas and the small one runs 45 bucks, is up good for up to 50 watts. And the larger one is 75 bucks, good up to 100 watts. These things fit in your pocket. They're really small. I have both. 
Uh, now, caveat to this, with the PL259 coax, you're going to have to have some uh, SO239 to BNC adapters, about two bucks uh, for, to use those antenna to use those antennas uh, with if you choose that uh, as an option. Uh, next one up here, obviously, is one of my favorites, uh, the DX Commander Expedition. Uh, with shipping and all, you're looking at about 300 bucks, give or take. And that's a fantastic antenna because you can take it with you. You can set it up. You can set up the backyard of your house. You can set up at a park. It all comes down to like a two-foot pole and a bunch of little wires, things you can put in a box. Uh, got four or five uh, bands you can use on it. Excellent, excellent antenna. If anybody tells you differently, they're lying. As a fantastic antenna, there's a reason why he sells them so so quickly and so and so uh, why he's so popular worldwide for that antenna. Uh, th option three, again going back a little bit more budget friendly, uh, is a 10 tennis 49 to one N fed half wave for 39.95. This is a hundred watt unit, and you'll need to supply your own wire to use it. Obviously, it just comes with the box as you see there. So you have to supply your own uh, ground counterpoise and your own antenna wire. Now, to solve that, you can go to Soda Beams, and they have an excellent wire for about $17 with shipping and handling. And you get, like, tons of wire. Uh, it's, it's so much, you'll have enough for probably seven or six or seven antennas uh, down the road, depending on what you're, what you're doing. But those are just some options I wanted to give you. Some, you, you, know, you can kind of gear out how you want to do it. Now, let's go to my packages. I actually set up some complete packages for you guys. So say you went with option one, and we're looking at, the, looking at the G90 package. The Jegu G90 is $440 bucks across the board. That is from uh, Radiodity, HRO, and Gigaparts. I think Gigaparts is actually $9 more expensive, but the rest of them are around $440. Uh, the 15-amp-hour battery from BioNO is going to run you $149. The KM4ACK antenna will run you about $40 bucks. And the ABR 218 50-foot coax running at $54, giving you a total before tax and shipping of about $689. So option two, we upgrade from the G90 to the 891. Everything here is still the same. You're, you're, now your total before tax and shipping is about 883. Now, I did say something, you know, I talked about the KM4 ACK antenna and, you know, well, but I can't build an antenna. Actually, you can. You just don't know it yet. Um, however, if you want the ready to go solutions, like I said, grab the spark plug antenna and uh, you'll have to get the adapters for those or the other two antennas I was telling you about. But, you know, go with the, go with the DX Commander. If you're on a budget and you can't really do a whole lot, you know, 300 bucks on an antenna might be a little steep. Uh, you can always add that to your uh, future future gear, <laughs> have like a future gear list and, and, and let it go from there. Let's go back to the main cam here. So. That's just a couple of ideas. I don't want to make a really long video about it and go into it. I've had I have videos on these different items here. You can go back and check those out. And by the way, if you get a chance here, you know, take this is a good opportunity to, to subscribe. I did some analytics on my site the other day or on my channel and noticed that about 70% of you that watch my videos have not subscribed. It is free. Down below, there's a little subscribe button. Click that, click on the little bell, and you're good to go. You'll be notified when I do new videos. Anywho. I think that these are both two good options. They're still expensive. I mean, HF is going to be expensive. And that's just the way it is. But I tried to find the cheapest route for you with the most reliable gear that I personally own. If I own it, it's because I like it and I, I've tested it. And if I tell you it's good stuff, I, I promise you, I, I'm, I went that, brought it to the paces. If it can survive me, it can survive anybody. Uh, so these are things to... to uh, uh, Consider for yourself and see what you want to do. But again, it comes down to what are you going to do with your HF? You now, if you're going to sit at home and just do radio because you have an opportunity to do so, uh, I definitely suggest maybe switching out the amp, the 15 amp hour battery for an actual power supply. She's so not running the battery down, have to constantly charge it up to use your radio. But these are great solutions for getting into HF. And you know, I, I used to laugh at the at the G90 because like, oh, it's 20 watts, you know, cheap Chinese radio. Well, I have a buddy of mine, uh, I, I uh, go out and do POTA with a lot, and he's had this radio for quite a while, and he goes out and does POTA with it because he, he's on a limited budget, and this is his radio, the one he you know, had available to him at the time. This is what he chose to use. Uh, so before you start scoffing at, oh, it's only 20 watts, it's all QRP, this guy has made over 4,000 
read my lips, 4,000 contacts since November of last year at the park that we go to down here where we live. So he's not letting the 20 watts get in the way of him making contacts. And he wasn't using any fancy antennas. He had, I think he had a, uh, he had like a uh, uh, 49 to one end fed halfway that he made himself 15, 20 bucks, threw it up in a tree, attached a wire to it and boom, he's on the air. Uh, I let him borrow a couple of my, a couple of my antennas over the, over the past uh, few months here as well. And he's done the same thing with those. And now he's upgrading stuff as he's going along. He's doing what I'm telling you guys to do. He started off some cheaper items went through it, went through the paces, and then over time saved up for the ones he wanted and upgraded and improved and added to his uh, HF gear collection. And now I think he's running like a DX Commander with the, with the, with the G90. Or not, not or, yeah, he run DX Commander with the G90 and a couple other things. But we're, he's working on things. And it's not a race to get to the best stuff, you know, as soon as you can. If you have the opportunity, you have the budget for it, great. If you don't, then don't worry about it. Don't, don't sweat it. Work with what you got. But I want to at least give you two options here that you could work with that would be feasible and viable to uh, acquire. Anywho, guys, again, don't want to make a long video. If you got questions, post them down below. If you have any ideas for new shows you'd like to see, email me through the website, hamradiofornontechies.com, and uh, we'll go from there. Again, remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and we will see you next time. This is Ham Radio for Non-Techies, and we are clear.